Mr. Chairman, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Delegates, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, my fellow Ugandans, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Defense Council, the government and uh, the people of Uganda, I welcome you all most heartedly to Uganda. I extend to all of you warm and uh, fraternal greetings, and uh, I express the hope that your deliberations will be a resounding success. It is with much delight that I welcome among us our gallant brothers from Mozambique, Sao Tome, and the Prince, the Cape Val Island, and the Comoros as a full-fledged independent states and the proud and the loyal members of the Organization of African Unity. <laughs> On behalf of the Republic of Uganda, I am happy that this most historic occasion has taken place in Uganda. Once more, I wish to extend to you our gallant fighters, our most fraternal welcome and uh, congratulations on your most worthy victory over colonialists and uh, imperialists. Twelve years ago, the heads of state and the government of Independent Africa meeting in Addis Ababa plead themselves to the cause of African freedom, dignity, justice, and independence. The void never to rest until the entire continent was free politically, economically, socially, culturally, and in all other ways. Today, as representatives of the wishes of the African peoples, you are once more meeting to review and take stock of our successes and the failures. You should do this with keen attention. You must not fear self-criticism if necessary. The people of Africa must be given the true picture of the situation. If we have to ask our people to rededicate themselves for the future, we must put before them everything as they are in reality. Developments in the world are moving fast. Imperialism and the colonialism continue to fight a rear guard battle taking many forms and the colors like a chameleon. Sometimes they are aggressive, at other times they pass as detent. There have been problems arising from the energy crisis which in turn have intensified the problem of inflation 
there has been much starvation and grass maltration as a result of a serious shortage of food. The shortage of food has hit our continent seriously because of the unusually lengthy drought in many areas. All these problems must be answered not by mere talk but by positive action. You must address yourselves to all of them with equal attention. The problems of imperialism, colonialism, and the new colonialism especially must continue to occupy our minds. Millions of our peoples continue to be subjected to 